Maybe big data has gotten too big. Whether you're a B2B marketer or a consumer brand, your data needs to be viable, relevant, and accessible so that Starista can help you retain customers, acquire customers, and make it personal. Welcome to the Marketing Stir Podcast by Starista, probably the most entertaining marketing podcast you're going to put in your ear. I'm Ben, the associate producer here at Starista. The goal of this podcast is to chat with industry leaders and get their take on the current challenges of the market. And we'll have a little fun along the way. In today's recap episode, we revisit guests from Season 2, featuring Claudia Lee, VP of Partner Marketing from Nutanix, Hilary Carpio, Director of Account-Based Marketing at Snowflake, and Kelly Butler, Director of Marketing Content at Business Solver. Give it a listen. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I think it's the learning aspect, right? When you're what I still call Nutanix a startup, even though, you know, we're, we're pretty large now, but we're more of a mid-sized company, but we still have that mentality where, you know what, try something, you'll learn from it. Some of it will work. Some of it you'll learn from, and, you know, it'll help you build for the future. It's that mentality that I, I really love, right? That's the number one thing is just the, the opportunity to try new things and, learn from it, right? Like, I think this isn't a startup story, but I think all of us who are marketers during the pandemic learned a ton about virtual events and quality of your message in a video format and just like ways to tell the story outside of doing a seminar or a live event, right? Like that, those are skills that any marketer is a better marketer for, right? So just examples of that happen all the time, every day, right, at a startup like Nutanix. Claudia, you've been at some pretty uh, impressive companies and a lot of impressive roles. Uh, What advice can you give a younger company to build a marketing engine that works for them? Um, I would say one thing I've learned a lot over the years is just be clear on what you want this to look like in three to five years out. <clears throat> I think when, um, whether it doesn't have to be a startup, it can be in any company where things are just very fast paced. The natural knee jerk reaction is to act and you always have to act, right? Urgency is important, but the more you have in your mind, the vision of what you want this to look like in three to five years, then you can do things in a way that's building for the future, right? You're kind of like, it's like, it's kind of like killing two birds, right? Every tactic, every program in a way, you want that MQL to get produced for your short-term goal, but every program or tactic should helping you, should be helping you build a future program or make the program stronger or, you know, build capability that you're going to scale out in other ways. So I think that would be my main advice, right? Is just to think about what what you believe your marketing engine is going to look like three to five years out, not just the today. And then you can build the steps to get there. And, um, you know, just in my little corner of the world, thinking about partnering all the time, that's actually really important because I see a lot of companies that um, build a a very direct marketing and sales direct um, engine, right? And then they hit this patch where they want to grow more. And then they think about partnering and you haven't really planted the seed yet. So you kind of, you know, want to start thinking about how our partners part of your go to market from the beginning so that you're planning for that and building that because it'll take time to bear fruit, right? Just like customers, it's the same thing, right? You, you have to like build the value prop, build the engagement, build the relationships, and then you can start selling with your partners. It's the same thing, right? So I would, yeah, that would be my kind of like point number two is like, Think about just um, just think about how you want to use partners in your go-to-market model and build that into your into your engine. Because if you get too ingrained into a direct mindset, I, I've seen this at companies as well. If you're too ingrained into the direct mindset, it's really hard to change behavior, right? After it's pretty ingrained. So for my grad work, part of what I studied was banner blindness, and that's where our brains have the schema that we create in order to protect ourselves from persuasion that could be harmful, right? So this all happens at a subconscious level that when we see so many advertisements and banners was what this this specific study I'm referencing was about. You see them over and over and over again. We don't actually don't even see them. 
we don't notice them because our brain is, str is strategically and automatically filtering them out of our view to keep us from being persuaded. So as marketers, and what I really think my job is in account-based marketing or ABM is how to cut through that banner blindness. And you do that by really adding value and building trust, right? To lower those guards down in your brain, you have to show that you're not a threat. You're not a harm. That's like your instinctual primal response, not necessarily something that's, that's new that that's to protect yourself. So what our team is really good at and what I really pride ourselves on is what we use data and we're a very data-driven organization, especially working at Snowflake, we use data to understand what you might care about. And then we message to you based off of what you care about. That helps lower that, that barrier, right? Where you're blocking everything out and go, oh, I actually need to do that, or that's something I'm struggling with. Now we're solving a problem instead of pushing a product. And when you solve somebody's problem, then you have a spot on their calendar. You, they're trying to solve this problem anyway. You become an asset to them instead of an annoyance. And so it's really nice to connect that kind of banner blindness thought process or idea of how it works to how we do things differently at Snowflake on, on my team, because it's really all connected. Um, but it's really treating humans like humans. That's the, that's the net of it, right? Treat a human like a human and, and add value or stay out of their way. Yeah, and, and that's this is gonna go right into the next question that I had and I'm glad you brought it up because I wanted to get your take on because of your experience in B2B marketing mm -hmm. at well-known companies, what areas do you feel that other companies are falling short in when they're doing B2B marketing? What, 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 what's some advice there? I think there's two things. There's lack of cohesion across marketing teams. And that's even at a startup where you have only two or three or maybe even one individual doing marketing, really spreading your, your tactics out in a way I need to, you know, I was talking to a startup the other day because I do some coaching and they were saying, you know, I need to please my CEO because I need to fill the lead funnel, but I also, um, I need to do this content piece and I need to focus on whatever, and I'm going to separate my time. My advice to them is the same to what you're asking, which is, how do you connect all of those things together, right? Because if you're a marketer and you have a disconnected thought process or these disconnected priorities, it's going to feel disconnected to your recipient or your audience as well. So you want to stitch your different strategies together so it's one cohesive flow and think about how you can reuse your different pieces of content, your different strategies, your different channels to, to make one story. So it's a it's one narrative that the consumer receives. So that's that's the first thing I think people uh, fall short on or struggle with. Uh, the second thing that I think people struggle with is the ability to execute. And I think that's where we really excel at Snowflake. And that's a strength of mine is to take strategy and turn it into action. To execute, you have to focus on the people in the process and think about technology second. Whereas most people go straight to technology. Hey, I need to buy an ABM platform. I need to buy this platform. I need to buy this data set. I need to buy whatever. They get all of these things, but then they can't take it to market, right? They can't get it where they have the data that the SDRs are using and sales team is using and partner marketing is using and sales enablement, everybody else on one page. Because when you are all on the same page and you're all using it and you know what each person is supposed to do, you can get this thing to market in a very cohesive way to then match the cohesive narrative that you've built. So you've got to pair the strategic narrative with the strategic tactics in a way that you can actually do something with, as opposed to being a disconnected mess. Um, so right now, Business Solver is about four weeks out. We're about a month away from our annual conference. Uh, we call it Vision, um, just as a way of thinking forward, right? Um, you want your vision to be 2020 at all times. Um, we're not big fans of hindsight at Business Solver. We always want to be forward thinking uh, and forward leaning. And so our vision event is always themed around just that, um, how to capture uh, those strategies and the data and the insights to keep your organization uh, looking forward and moving forward on behalf of um, your people. And so this year, uh, we obviously have to acknowledge and address the great resignation. And so our vision event will be talking about how if the great resignation is the disease, then culture is the cure. And so we've uh, got a great speaker lineup um, ready to talk about all of that and uh, really drive those messages home from different um, topic perspectives. So we're going to be talking about burnout and mental health and addressing that for your employees um, as they try to hang on um, as we're even easing out of the pandemic, like the mental health uh, effects are still lingering for a lot of people. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Stir Podcast by Starista. Please like, rate, and subscribe.
If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, please email us at themarketingstir at starista.com. And thanks for listening.